do some reading. Yesterday, um, you were introduced to the last historical person, character, that you're going to discuss this year, and that was Jonathan Goforth. Um, and we'll talk some more about him in just a minute. First, I want to go over your targets for today. Your targets are, I can identify how the main character shows that he loves God. And when you read part two today, you'll find that out. You'll find that out. It's a, you can put yourself into his place and understand how he feels. Um, our phonics for today is digraph IE. Now, typically, E is considered a sneaky letter, and it tiptoes around, and it makes the vowel that it's next to scream its name. So normally when we see IE, we're used to it saying I, but there are many instances where that rule does not work, and today we're going to learn that IE can also make the E sound, and I put up here swapping. So if you get to an unknown word and it has digraph IE, try it with I, and if it doesn't sound correct, then swap it and try it with E. There's a spelling rule that we were taught growing up. There's a little saying that says I before E except after C. Or when sounded in, as A in neighbor and way. And we're actually going to talk about that rule next week. But just know that I usually comes before E. And it can say I and it can say E. If you look at the sentence at the top, and what I've done is copied this page that I sent through as an attachment to your parents. It says, we each ate a piece of homemade apple pie and ice cream. And if you look, we have two words underlined, and both of them have I-E in them. But the first one is pronounced piece with an E, P E. -s. When I segment it, the vowel says E. And this one says pi, I. So you hear the I sound. Some examples where I E makes the E sound are yield, like what you do when you come to that triangular red and white sign, yield, and chief, like the leader of the tribe. We have a lot of chiefs in our room. All right. Some other words that we need to practice reading, they all have digraph IE, and in these words, the IE is going to say E, as in yield and chief. So this is grief, field, niece, because that's CE, the C says S, grieve, thief, shield, piece, like a piece of the pie. And believe. Now I'm going to read some some sentences at the bottom, and you have to use one of these words to go in the blank. So just yell it out and let your mom wonder what in the world are they doing. Mr. Gordon is planting corn in the large. Where would you plant corn? And I hope you screamed field. Asher fit the last blank of the puzzle into its place. Liam, that one was just especially for you. Fit the last blank of the puzzle. What do you have in a puzzle? I hope you screamed peace. The children felt blank when their grandfather died. And that one is grief. That's sadness. When you feel sad, it's the same as feeling grief. I wear sunglasses to blank my eyes from the sunlight. I wear sunglasses to what does the sun what do the sunglasses do? They prevent the sun from getting in your eyes. So what word up there is something that prevents? And you should have screamed out shield. Christians blank Jesus is coming again. What did you scream out? Believe. Christians believe Jesus is coming again. All right, your vocabulary words for today are, this has a final stable syllable on it because it last, always makes the same sound, has its own vowel sound. 
This is a closed vowel, so that's jingle. And the second word is a plural of a word I think we've already had. Because we had to change the Y to I and add an S. Missionary becomes missionaries. 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 When the store door opened, we heard the bell jingle. Our church sends blank to faraway lands to preach the gospel, and that's missionaries. Usually, we have a group from Trinity that goes to the DR, but we weren't able to do that this year. All right, so in yesterday's passage, you met Jonathan Goforth, and I'm going to ask you the review questions that went along with it. Who gave Jonathan Goforth five pennies? And that would be the lady who was visiting the farm. What does Jonathan want to do with his pennies? Well, he wants to do what you guys would want to do if you had money. He wants to spend it, and he wants to buy candy with it. I told you, I reminded you of that little story about my great aunt and her brother and how the little rat stole his candy off the rafters. Why will Jonathan have to wait to buy his candy? There were several reasons. One, it was too late in the day. The sky was already turning pink. And the next day was the Lord's Day. And believe it or not, way back in the day, even when Miss Millette was a little girl, like some of your grandparents, stores weren't open on Sundays. We didn't get to go shopping on Sundays. When I was about, I think, seven or eight years old, the store started opening from one to six. But before then, you didn't go to the mall. You didn't go shopping. There was nothing open on Sundays. You went to church, you came home, you had a family lunch, and then you went back to church that evening. But there weren't stores open to go shopping. At the end of the passage yesterday, your parents asked you, what is Jonathan's treasure? And you know that it's those five pennies. What does Jonathan want to do with his treasure? He wants to buy candy. And do you think the candy store is a good place for Jonathan to spend his money? Well, if I was Jonathan and I didn't normally have money and I didn't usually get candy, that would probably seem like a great place to go. What would you want to do with the money? Now, to you, five pennies doesn't seem like a lot, but times change, and back when Jonathan Goforth was alive, five pennies was actually a lot of money. All right, you are going to read pages 100 to 103 to find out about Jonathan's battle. Now, when we think of a battle, we think of a fight, but Jonathan's not going to get into a literal fight. He's going to have a fight between what his spirit is telling him he should do and what his mind is telling him he should do, and that's a battle. He's having an internal war. Part of him wants to do something, and part of him thinks that he needs to do something else. I wrote on my notes that that money was burning a hole in his pocket. That's what I thought of when I, when I read the first part yesterday. He got that money, and he could not wait to spend it. He wanted to spend it so badly, and he had to wait. He had to have patience, and in that time of waiting, he has this battle going on inside of him. So read the, t the 100 to 103 to find out about Jonathan's battle and then answer the questions at the end of the passage. You're going to complete work with pages 299 and 300. The first one is on cause and effect, and cause and effect is when one thing causes another thing to happen. It was raining, so I wore my rain boots. It was hot, so I put on shorts. The grass was tall, so I cut it. There's an event that causes another event to happen. The cause and the effect. And then your phonics page, of course, will be on diagraph IE saying E. Okay? Simple enough. And that will be your job for the week. 
when you finish this part of the story unless you choose to go ahead.